So thank you for coming. I am Dr. Jeanette Concepcion, and I've been practicing as a clinical child psychologist for about 28 plus years at this point. And I tell people I've seen it and heard it all in four different states and all those years, so nothing can shock me, except some of the things that can shock me are now in technology. <laughs> Because it seems like I'm learning all the time, too, about the new things that are out there that are frankly just scaring the heck out of me um, because of the dangers that they pose to our children, mental health-wise, certainly, and even um, um, physically as well. So let's get this started. And I'm going to save about kind of an hour for the lecture part. Um, but this is very much a participatory kind of a deal. So I do not want to be like the Charlie Brown wah, 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 and have you guys just be out there spacing out. I want questions. I want a kind of a dialogue that make this a little bit fun. All right? Um, all right. Here's my, my standard disclaimer. Anybody who's been to the previous two know this is the same deal because I cut and pasted that slide. Um, basically just saying that I'm not doing treatment right now, my evaluation. Um, but seek a mental health professional if you need to. Kelly already talked about the acknowledgments, so we'll pass on that one. Um, and so last time we talked about um, all the ways that um, kids can be affected by technology, including brain development, or lack of development in some cases when we start kids out too young with technology. It is messing with their brains and the adequate development neurologically. Okay, that's scary, scary stuff, guys. We also talked about mood, we talked a lot about that, about how overuse of technology affects kids' mood. Um, lots of increase in, in level of anxiety, lots of increase in level of depression, secondary to these kids being on these devices. Um, as is with um, last time, I'm going to focus more on the cell phone use today, um, and I did the majority of it last time. That being, uh, being said, there's a lot of um, video game stuff out there, there's research on that. Um, there's the um, educational type things that kids are being exposed to, um, you know, things like um, the flipped math classes and things like that. That's technology being used. Who knows what a flipped math class is? All right. Um, flipped math class is where you're actually instructed to go home and go online, and you actually kind of teach yourself, and then you go back into class the next day and review it with the teacher. It's a flipped classroom. So a lot of districts are doing that for math instruction. I'm not going to offer an opinion on that, um, but it's, it's out there as an educational intervention, but your kid is required to be on the screen to do it. Um, we also talked about regulatory ability. That's how well, I, I call it with the kids I work with, how well did you stop and think button work in kid? All right, so it's the ability to regulate yourself and to evaluate yourself. We know that that is being affected by the overuse of technology. Kids aren't developing that stop and think before they do things, and frankly, we need that as adults. Um, memory, kids without, um, with overusing technology, their memory is not working so hot. Right? <coughs> For any of us, if we rely on that box called a cell phone, then we don't have to actually remember things, we just click on it. Think of it as an external hard drive. Okay, but your kid needs to build an internal hard drive instead. Um, attention, um, we can all look pretty ADD-ish if we rely too much on our um, devices. We don't have to pay attention. Um, very long. Things are ding, 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 ding. They're stimulating our brain without our control. Um, sleep, yes, the sleep thing. We talked about that with how um, this, uh, cell phones are interfering with kids getting enough sleep, which, hello, that affects um, how, what their mood is, and then that affects behavior regulation, and it's this kind of like a cycle. And we talked about social relationships. We talked about that a lot. How kids aren't learning what a, <coughs> what a friend is in the classic sense. Their friends are people that they're meeting online, people that they don't even know personally, they've never met face to face, um, and how dangerous that is, not just for them in terms of interactions and what goes on there and the risk for cyberbullying, but also um, in terms of them not realizing how to interact socially. All right? That was kind of last time. Um, today, we're going to look at um, hopefully strategies that you guys can start to implement to monitor your kids' use on the phone. Um, what apps can be parental control apps, and also apps that, um, in doing the research, um, they're scary. Okay, they're scary because they hide things. And um, and my, my kid Haley, who I gave an acknowledgement to on the slide, she found a lot of those, and she would come to me and she goes, "Mom, did you know there's this app and it's like hiding this kind of stuff?" I'm like, are you kidding me? She goes, "Yeah, I didn't even know that one." So there's, we're going to talk a lot about that today. And I really want to let you guys know, this is a brainstorm. I'm going to start this. Okay, I'm going to start this with all the slides. But guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, it really is. There are so many things. Kelly and I were just chatting that 
um, that they get developed all the time, it's really, really hard to stay on top of the latest apps that are being developed, the good, the bad, and the ugly ones. Okay, so this is going to give you a head start, but um, this is not all inclusive. Okay, get you going. All right, so when should I give my kid <coughs> access to electronics? There is no exact age to give your kid a smartphone. I will ask of this audience, um, raise your hand if your kid has a smartphone currently. Okay, so almost everybody. But the general consensus with pediatricians and research is, is that um, babies and toddlers, no, no, no. Okay? Do not give your kid a cell phone at that young age or exposure to electronic stimulation with the exception of if your kid is wanting to FaceTime your grandparents. Okay, if your kid wants to FaceTime grandparents, they live in another state, another country. Beautiful, okay? There's nothing dangerous about that. But what I mean about kids being exposed to um, electronics is they have the little, you know, colorful games and things like that. And I may have mentioned this last time, but gosh, when I go to the grocery store, like Cub or, or Target, and, it's like, and I see, you know, a mom or a dad pushing the cart, and their kid is a baby or a toddler, you know, so they have to sit in the little front of the cart, and the, the baby or the toddler has a cell phone there that's mom's. You know, and the kid is happy, happy as a lark, but they're, they're doing something on their, on their cell phone, they're watching. I'm like, oh, no, 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 too young, too young. But I mind my own business, okay? And I talk to you guys about, hopefully you'll share that with other people. That's really not good for the brain. Okay, you're starting that kid off way too young for electronic stimulation. Um, and in general, the longer that you can wait before your kid gets exposed to that, or certainly before they get a cell phone, the better. I work with um, you know all kinds of parents of all different kinds of jobs and whatever, and it's interesting. My my teacher kids, okay, my teacher kids seem to be the most adamant about their kids won't have a won't have a cell phone until really late. And I'm asking them, I'm like, you know, kind of why? And they're like, oh my gosh, Dr. Steve, the things that we see in the classroom, <laughs> there is no way I'm going to put you know that phone in my kid's hand before they're ready for it. So they're they're the kind of the sources like no way. You know, for a long time. All right, so wait, 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 wait. Um, children are going to increase in usage from, you know, beyond toddlerhood um, up until, you know, they're eight, old enough and able to use it on their own. And I didn't actually look at the research on this, but I would predict that elderly people, frankly, either don't use them or there's a big decline in kind of how they use them. I didn't look at that. It wasn't really relevant to this topic. Um, but the exposure does not equal regular access. So if your kid is exposed now and then, that is different from regular access. So if little baby Johnny, who's sitting in the shopping cart with mommy, expects that phone every time they go to the grocery store, that's regular access, okay? So kind of keep that in mind. Um, general things to consider before you give your child electronics. How mature is my child? Okay, what do I mean by maturity? What well, I mean how does your kid handle things? And are they at their age level or even a titch above? Okay? So if you have a 10-year-old who's having meltdowns at home, they're not mature as a 10-year-old should be. Okay? If you have a 13-year-old and they're acting like a 10-year-old, they're a few years younger than what we would expect. So then treat them like a 10-year-old in terms of that decision-making. And that's what they're showing you. If they're 13 and they're acting 13 and a little bit higher, meaning they're uber mature, great for them. Okay? That's, that's like, all right, I think my kid might be able to handle this. <coughs> Um, does my child have a history of making good decisions? Okay. If, I, if I've told my kid to do something, can they follow through on it? Can they make a decision about how, how well they do their homework? Can they make a good decision about if their friend is mean to them, their real friend, by the way, not their cyber friend, their real friend is mean to them, how well can they handle that? Okay. How well can they also communicate? Um, how can they um, communicate to me as their parent? Do I know what's going on with Johnny or Susie, or are they hiding it? Um, does my child have a good track record of standing up to peers? So if Johnny or Susie has been bullied, you know, can they kind of, do they come to us and they let us know? Or do they say, hey, you know what, I handle this. Here's how I handle this. Those are good signs of maturity, all right? Um, and then how well can my child regulate? Regulate, regulate, regulate. That's a big, big thing to consider. And regulation means, you know, how well is their mood roughly like this? Okay, it's going to go a little bit uppy downy. But if their mood is like this, and you don't quite know what's going to trigger them, you know, mood regulation, it's going to get worse with the cell phones, guys. So if it's already not doing so hot, then you probably shouldn't add more fuel to the fire, so to speak. All right, so look at all those variables. 
and then talk about it, you know, with your spouse, partner, etc. About okay, how how is my kid? How would you rate them on these? And I would guide you places. I have one um, question, sorry. Sure, absolutely. Like, what about, like, and I don't know even with child development and when this, mm -hmm. when you start to see that, but what if, like, you know it's sort of like, sort of like, I want to say like a, like addict, but sort of like addictive yeah. tendencies toward things. I mean, is that another thing to work? Absolutely. That's a very good Because, I mean, they may be well behaved, but then they're, you know, they just. If they get overfitted on yeah. something? Absolutely. And there are a subset of kids that that's just kind of <clears> the way their brain works. Their brain might get addicted to um, this particular hobby or like collecting rocks or whatever. Hobbies are great, fantastic. But if it's to the degree that it's kind of outside the realm of normalcy for that age, then your kid has more of a likelihood to get stuck. That the, that's, the, that's the word I usually use with my, my therapy goes is stuck. Your brain is stuck on that. So if your kid has a history of getting stuck on random things, they're probably going to get stuck more likely on electronic because it's so potent for them. It's potent for everybody, but for that kid, it's probably going to be more potent because their brain tends to get fixated anyway. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So that's a good one. I actually should have put that up on there. Um, if you think about tech in general, <coughs> it's not all bad. Okay? I mean, I, I use my phone well. Right now, I'm using it to time myself so I can periodically go over here and make sure I'm not running over time. I love that. Okay? My brain's probably not going to get addicted on it just because of that feature. Okay? I love it. Um, but think of other things with tech. Um, consider the examples of positive technology. So it doesn't always have to be a phone. It really doesn't. Think of toys. Toys that are kind of techy toys. Um, there are things like smart telescopes. If you become a sciencey kid, okay, there's a lot of technology behind that. Your kid can learn a lot as well as enjoy that kind of activity. Um, this is what my daughter dug up these things. I didn't know some of these things existed. I tell some of my therapy families, it's like, once your kids get out of a kid land, you lose track of like what the cool toys are. I used to know what like, all the cool toys were. Now my therapy kids have to tell me what the cool toys are. Like, hey, Dr. C, what about this? And I'm like, Mom, not my toy. What is that toy? <laughs> and they get great pride in telling me what that toy is. Um, there's a thing called um, Ozobots, and they teach kids how to code. Oh, coding, man, what a cool skill. Great usage of a technology kind of thing. Um, Hello Barbie. I didn't know there was a Hello Barbie. Apparently Barbie does things electronically and you can program her and stuff like that. Go figure. Um, better than a phone. Or things called Cognitoys. There's a Cognitoy Dino. Um, and I guess it gets smarter with more interaction. I don't, do you know, do you know these things? No. We, no? Have, we have the dinosaur. Okay, well, is, is the dinosaur, does it get smarter? It, it basically is like Siri for kids. Is it really? <laughs> so, oh. But it's more like the... It, it, it'll play games and other things with them, so it's like it's a lot of voice interaction. And this, oh gosh, I'm not going to shame you if you have your, if your kid has a TV in your room, but don't have your a TV in your kid's room. But a recent study said 42 percent of families do. And here's what I put down: Why? Why? Actually, when I ask parents that, the most common answer is they use it to get to sleep. Okay, they can listen to the TV as they're falling asleep. Uh, no, not a good thing, guys. Um, I. I see, and from what I know of the research, there is no functional benefit for your kid to have a TV, TV in the room, and I see a lot of potential risk that the brain gets habituated to that as a, as a sound and um, data that gets put in their brain that they have to have before they fall asleep. If your kid does have sleep issues that needs something to help um, align with their brain to um, do a white noise, like a sound machine or a fan, okay, theoretically it's going to accomplish the same purpose, but without the risks of having a TV in your kid's room. Because you also can't monitor that. And cable, you know, there's a lot of little naughty stuff on cable these days. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's another type of tech. Be careful of that. Um, set aside daily device-free time, OK? Where it's like from you know 7 to 8, before you get into all the busyness of bedtime routine and stuff, after dinner is done. You know, hey, kids, what do you want to do? Now, I'm willing to bet, because I'd probably be tempted to as well. They'd be like, all right, everybody's done. All right, you know, dad and mom go their separate ways. My mom's working on something. Somebody's on their device. Kids are doing something electronic. I'm guessing that's the norm. But that norm isn't necessarily a good norm. If you kind of say, okay, from here on out, we're going to set aside a time. Maybe it's just, you know, one or two nights a week. We're going to do something together. I will guarantee you all those things 15 years from now are what your kid's going to remember. They're not going to remember what they did on that particular <coughs> night that's like on their screen or whatever. They will remember. Yeah, mom, dad, you know one of the things I really used to like is when we used to do this, right? One thing we used to do is we were card players, because so we taught our kids how to play cards. 
And so we would have like our Concepcion family euchre matches. And of course, physical health, physical health. Kelly, you will promote this, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. When, when we're on our devices, we are sitting on our butts, guys. Our heart is not working. Our brain and heart are not working together. We're not building muscle. We're not building stamina. We're not getting that feeling that we get after we're done exercising that we call, you know, joy. We call it, yeah. Okay, we can work up a little sweat. Yeah. Okay, so we're just talking to <coughs> kids of that. All right. Um, general things to consider. Again, be cognizant of your own usage, guys. Okay, we're kind of clueless about that. We kind of can't self include. I get my little weekly screen report, you know, and I see it have like three hours a day. And I'm like, what the heck was I doing three hours a day of getting home? Okay, well, partly because I was watching a movie and, you know, um, on my phone at the same time. Not good. <laughs> All right? So, um, do you come home from work and turn on your TV? Um, do you spend an excessive amount of time on your phone? Um, ask yourself, what are my kids seeing? And I have heard this, guys, many, many times from the kiddos themselves. Well, but why should I have restrictions? Mom and Dad don't, and Dad gets home from work, and Mom, you, well, you know, I get home from work, and after you're done with the dishes, you're on your phone. These kids say it all the time. You know? So I guess we gotta kind of look at that. What are we doing? We have no right to say, you know, phones are bad if we're addicted ourselves. And we have, though, parent brains. We, we had brains developed before this time, so ours are better. Sorry, kids, ours are better. All right, earliest exposure to electronics, kind of going back into this. Um, nope, 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 that's kind of that slide, the nope slide. Um, no exposure to kids under age two, because kids <coughs> under age two, they learn by facial expression, they learn by tone of voice, they learn by physical um, attachment. Um, those do not translate well to a screen, which means we are depriving our kid. We're depriving them, them of that neuronal development and that brain activity that's how they start to develop. They need that. And screens take away from that. Okay, all the, if the two hours of time on a screen is two hours of time, that, that baby and toddler is not getting those things from um, mom or dad. All right? Um, next one. Preschoolers. Preschoolers can be exposed to screens in a limited way and with educational content. Okay? Um, again, my kids are a little bit older than probably most of yours are. Um, they're 20 and 23. They were, so listen, they were kind of on the, they didn't really get the brunt of this, because by the time the cell phones got in there, they were kind of had moved on already. But I remember, even then, you know, watching Elmo with them. But it wasn't just watching Elmo with like a, back then it was VCRs, guys, kind of old, <laughs> what can I say? <clears throat> VCR of Elmo, Elmo Palooza. I don't even know how many times we watched Elmo Palooza, and each time we would find something to talk about with Elmo Palooza. Oh, did you see how Elmo did this? Oh my gosh, this song, it's in Elmo Palooza. Wow, we get up and we dance to that song. Okay? So that's, I'm interacting with my kid. So preschoolers, you know, in limited um, amounts, fine. But it's got to be where you're doing something with your kid that takes it from beyond the screen into real life. Okay? In real life with mommy and daddy, or grandpa and grandma. Okay? Anybody. Um, and so you, have to, you want to talk about it. Um, or if it, even if it's like on an iPad and you have like a drawing app. Okay? Instead of just having your kid like da 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 you draw with them, and you make a little squiggle with them, and you say, oh, well, honey, what do you think this would be? I think that would be a piggy. What do you know about piggies? You know, piggies, they're pink. They say pink, pig. Okay, it's educational, right? And your kid gets that warm fuzzy from mommy or daddy to him or her, right? Um, like on this one here. If, if I had a little preschooler here, I would be like, um, let me see, I'll give her a girl's name. I always go Johnny and Susie. Okay, we'll do Susie. Um, I say, Susie, look at that. There's Kermit's going like this. Why is Kermit going like that? What do you think? Is he happy? He looks kind of like excited and kind of like he doesn't want to see that. What do you think he sees that he doesn't want to see? Oh, and look, do you see that? That one's not like the others. That would be hard to get over. I could make this one for 10 minutes, guys. Okay? <laughs> Random stuff that, that would actively involve Susie. Okay? And Susie would look at me. Susie would make eye contact with me. Um, Susie would ask questions to me. Okay? All that kind of stuff, invaluable. If my kid looks at even this on a screen, it loses its effect. Okay? If I'm off doing the dishes and I'm saying, okay, Susie, why don't you just watch this? Susie's not getting that, that same kind of interaction. Okay? So she's not learning. She's then becoming to looking at something on the screen, even if it's wonderful Kermit. Yeah, because Kermit rocks, frankly. Um, all right, wait, 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 wait. Um, the current age for when parents typically give their kid a smartphone is now age 10. Eek! 
all right? About four years earlier than it should be, brain-wise, and about two years earlier than it was just back in 2012. And it's really that parents are saying, you know, I'm tired of giving my kid my phone. You know, it's a pain in the butt. Nobody likes this. And I see this all the time in my waiting room. And the littler kids, you know, 8, 9, 10, because um, they usually have um, parent time and then kid time. Or a kid has to wait in the waiting room. But again, I have toys in there. I have good stuff in there, I think. And, um, and kid always looks up at the parent. And the mom goes, mm -hmm. reaches in, gives the kid the phone. The kid gets this look of glee. <laughs> and then, you know, kid's on the phone. And, you know, mom's talking to me. And so then that parents get tired of that. They're like, oh, well, fine, we'll give Johnny the phone. <laughs> get Johnny his own phone. Or grandparents. Sometimes grandparents give the phone. <laughs> I've heard it way too often. But, but the grandparents wanted to give it to them, and I don't know what to say. It's a great phone. I have to say no. <laughs> you know, save the money for college. <laughs> a great little thousand dollar contribution towards that college account. <laughs> Plus interest, I can make quite a bit of money, you know? <laughs> um, so, um, Age is not important against the level of maturity. We already talked about that. Maturity, maturity, maturity. Look at your kid objectively. By the way, you can also ask your kid's teacher. Well, how mature do you think Johnny or Susie is in class? Well, then, okay. Your kid's going to present differently at school than at home. But sometimes the teacher can give you an objective opinion. Or ask Kelly, Kelly, a pediatrician. <laughs> Take a kid in for his or her visit with Kelly. Kelly, what do you think about my kid's maturity? Do you think he or she is ready for this? Get some advice, guys. Um, another reason to wait is about fifth grade is when their first exposure to something explicit comes along, either porn um, or sexting. Okay, it's around age fifth grade on average. Does that freak you guys out? Mm -hmm. It should, because that's not good. All right. And if we haven't thought of these things before, then we really need to get our get ourselves going on the ship now. Okay. Um, two clicks to porn, I talked about them last time, really it takes about two clicks to find pornography these days, whether it's on a phone or on a computer. Did you guys know that whitehouse.com is not a good safe place to go? Whitehouse.gov is. It's whitehouse.com or not. Kids do a little research project, right? All right, for fifth grade history. All right, White House, oh, you find about the presidents and Congress and all that. Let me see, oh, you can go to whitehouse.com. Huh? No. No, don't go there. By the way, don't look at it on the work computer either. Okay? <laughs> um, um, at least I've been told, so to speak. I've not checked that out for quite some years. Um, so um, be careful, guys. That's why you need filters on your computer or any device that your kid has access to. Um, this is like time to mature naturally. Wait until 8. This is Martin and Kelly's favorite um, program because the program encourages a community involvement that starts with parent one, it goes to parent two, and it goes to parent three and four and 20, to where you, you all agree independently, I'm not gonna wait, or I'm gonna wait until eighth grade to give my kid a smartphone. Because what happens is there's this social pressure for kids. Right? Kid, kids in fifth grade, and they are finding out at birthday parties and stuff, well, what do they find out about it? Through texting and Snapchat, because eight out of the 10 kids in Johnny's class have smartphones and they have those apps on them. And so your kid is like, well, everybody else has got it. You know, how am I supposed to know about these parties and stuff? Well, you get a whole group of community people and you say, you know, in this classroom now, eight out of 10 don't have access to that. They don't have smartphones. Only three out of 10 do. So then there's a lot of people that have to do things the old fashioned way. Your kid then doesn't feel different about that. Okay. So, um, there's a more of a community pressure than to comply in a positive way to limit that. Because I will tell you, I've run across this all the time. Kids in like fourth grade, fifth grade, they feel like, and maybe close to, the only kids without a smartphone. Um, and then there's a link up there too, and this will all be on the um, YouTube site once it's on the Hudson Physicians website. I'm not finding that, but it was interesting whenever I looked at the Wait Till Eighth um, website under the um, negative effects, it was almost identical to the stuff that I talked about last time, and I hadn't peaked. <laughs> and I said, wow. So they're really funny, those categories of impairment as well. Um, and I put here, you know, and even if you've already given your kid a smartphone, it's okay to say, you know what, I'm a grown up, and I kind of made an error here. I think I, I was, you know, jumping the gun <laughs> for you. And honey, I'm sorry for putting all that pressure on you that goes with this. I know you like it, but I have to do my, my parent job here and sub it out with a, uh, a dumb phone. Your kids won't hate you forever, trust me. Okay. And <laughs> you can also shut down data. 
So yes. that's the other piece is that yeah. you can, they, if they're hot on having a particular phone, mm -hmm. um, they can have it. You just don't have the data out of it. Then it's an iPod, I guess we call it then. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so before you give a phone, okay, or if you have still to monitor, um, seriously, guys, be, get as smart as these smartphones are. And that is hard. I was not raised in the tech age. That's not how my brain works. Okay, it's not my forte. I've had to learn. Everybody needs to learn to try. The goal is to be two steps ahead of your kids with tech savviness. Now that is hard. I have kids, you know, that they're coming in. They have, they jailbreak these things. Okay, and they get into these apps and they learn passwords. Parents have password protected this stuff, and these kids found find ways of getting that stuff. Okay. So find a tech expert, ask around, because you've got to be two steps ahead of them, guys. They get great kids. It's nothing against the quality of the kid. It's just that it's so easy for them to access the you know, mechanics of how these things work and break the rules. Um, so it's scary. Basic safety rules. You must follow the family rules as discussed. Yes, sir. Um, you must never post or trade personal pictures. Okay, now they're not going to like that. But um, picture then becomes, for a lot of kids around 11 to 13, then it becomes a semi-nude picture. Or then it becomes a half-nude picture, and then it becomes a nude picture. And you guys won't know about it, okay? Because they're going to delete it. Or they're going to hide it in one of these apps that I'm going to discuss here soon. Because you can hide these things. And it's like, you got to be kidding. There's one that, that particularly caught my attention. I don't know, it's a few slides down. But it basically looks like a music app. Like, can I sell an innocent music app? I'm gonna, you know, oh, yeah, sure, John, you can have that one. That looks innocent enough. Oh, no, I just want to hide all the naughty stuff. <laughs> um, you only use a screen name and not your screen <coughs> name. You don't share any personal, any passwords with anybody except your parents. You should always have the password and do random checks, as we talked about last time, um, to make sure that, that password works. So if Johnny gives you 12345 as his password, then at random times you go on there and you say, oh, hey, you know, Johnny, I need to see your phone, the phone check time. Love you, kid. You know, and you say, okay, for this app, one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't work. You think, ah, maybe I typed it wrong. One, two, three, four, five. Um, Johnny, <laughs> we would have a little discussion because you changed your password. Okay, they're, they're going to do it. They're going to try it. So random checks to, because you should have every password. By the way, do you guys use, um, what do they call password keepers on your phones? If not, you need to. Okay, there's a bunch of them. Um, basically, so you can remember all the passwords for your own stuff. Honestly, I don't know what I would do without the password keeper on my phone. Okay, because I can't remember all of them. And being a, a clinician, I have to like change my passwords a lot for anything that I have that's HIPAA compliant. And it's like, I can't remember if I change this thing every you know, six weeks. So password keeper, look them up on, on Google, you'll find some good ones. And then you can remember and check them on the kids. Okay? <clears throat> I have one for you and one for your kid. Um, never respond to a threatening email, post, text, or message, but you have to let your parents know. Um, and never agree to meet anyone in person that you've met online, such as the sad case that Kelly was talking about. Um, poor girl. Parent dues. You just spend a lot of time with your kid even before you give them a phone. You know, call it the 10 part series of phone education. We talk to kids about sex, we call it sex education, right? Why do we do that? Well, that's why kids won't get in trouble sexually, right? And they're going to learn about how their body works and how the opposite gender's body works and all that basic stuff. If we don't, well, it kind of leaves them with a lot of questions and potentially some big risks. We do that. We don't like it, but we do it. Same thing here. Phone education. You need to make it fun. Like, that. hey, Johnny, let's do phone education today. What do you think? I mean, be a dork, you know? <laughs> a little less of the resistance. Um, at least I think it does. <laughs> I've spent enough time being a dork, guys. Um, but spend a lot of time before. Again, no shaming parents, but if, if you have a phone and you're like, maybe for a birthday or Christmas, and you're like, so excited to see you know, Susie's face, and she opens the box and it's like, it's a new iPhone, it's the XR. I don't know what that is, I know it's a version of iPhone. Um, I just want 6S myself, by the way, guys. Um, and you see Susie, and just she lights up and she's so excited. And you're like, okay, Susie, there you go. Oh, you're going to have so much fun with it. Oh, we love you so much. All right, and that's it. But what's, what's Susie going to do, guys? <coughs> oh, Susie's a high risk. Okay, Susie is not having such as one through ten of, you know, phone education. All right, so before you give Susie a phone, or before Susie is allowed to use her phone that she's so gleeful about, um, 
then seriously get them all this, this stuff that we've talked about and a contract. I'll be getting the contracts here pretty soon. Okay? Um, the other thing is <coughs> kind of common sense. Um, keep all electronics in a common area where you can monitor use. Um, it's one of the curses of a laptop. Okay? They can be transportable. And kids are very quick while you know, mom or dad are busy doing a project or making some dinner or you know, chores. And the kids will be like, oh, I'm going to go take my fanciest laptop. Do it, do it. I'm going to go to my room. Hey, Mom, I'm in my room if you need me. Yeah, wink, wink. <laughs> um, if it's fixed, you know, like the old um, desktops, well, it's going to be in you know, someplace where you guys can see it. Not so much as a laptop. So get creative. Still have the rule that needs to be somewhere where you can see them. Um, look at credit card and phone bills. Oh, my gosh, guys. I have, I, again, I've heard it all. I have had parents who come to me, and little Susie, she's a sweet kid. Well, she got eight hundred dollars in internet, you know, phone charges and stuff. <coughs> and it's like, you know, parents got a huge bill, and we don't even know what all Susie was looking at. All right, yeah. I'm gonna go back one to the keeping yeah. all electronics in a common area. Sure. With the laptops, how do you feel about like the school Chromebooks that have, you know, whatever settings the right. school puts on the Chromebooks? I think it depends on how much the school has locked those puppies down. Yeah. Um, South Washington County this year, they, they, in the high school at least, they issued new Chromebooks for all the students. Those are so locked down, they really can't do too much naughty that I can figure out. I haven't examined them, but from what I'm hearing, I get it in the form of complaints from the kids. That thing won't do anything. I want just the educational stuff. <laughs> then, it's, then it's, you know, fine. But um, it is really highly variable. It is. Yeah. It's very variable. Some have really very minimal restrictions <laughs> yeah. on them. So that'd be a good thing to ask your your, um, your school principal about. What filters do you have? What restrictions do you have? Because right. it varies from school to school. Hudson has horrible filters. There's no filters. So meaning yeah, hardly any. Yeah. Yes. Good to know. Because then good to know means you have to take more action to protect your kid. So ask your kid often about, you know, what do your kids, what do your friends do? By the way, that's the best way to get info from your kids, is don't ask them to themselves, like, hey, Johnny, what do you think about this? Use it in the form of their friends. You know, hey, you know, with your buddies, they're such cool kids. You know, do they ever talk to you about like this kind of, you know, texting stuff or, you know, the being cyber harassed and stuff like that? Or anybody in school, anybody in your class that's even more removed? But that gets them talking, okay? So it's going to be more threatening to themselves if it's kind of like, what do you know? But if you ask a little bit more global way, often kids kind of will open up and you find out a lot. And I put up there, keep talking, keep talking, keep talking, but try not to be annoying. <laughs> they're going to be prickly. These are kids, they're growing up. Um, so be aware to try not to overdo it to where it's annoying, but still with the idea in your head, I've got to keep talking to the kid about this stuff, right? Um, some warning signs of spending um, long hours online, mostly at night. Hopefully if you guys take those phones away and computers out of their room and put them safely in the kitchen or dining area, you won't have to worry about that. But um, look at what time you can check um, logs and stuff to find out when they've been on. Um, phone calls from people you don't know. And after I made that um, slide, I'm like, but you know, with all those stupid robocalls, I mean, if somebody looked at my phone, there's going to be a whole lot of them that, that I don't know, okay? Because it's all those spam robocaller thingies. So still check, but it's a little bit more difficult. On <coughs> gifts arriving in the mail, um, these are more like signs of like predatory stuff. Um, your kid is quick or suddenly turning off the computer or quickly Xing out. Um, when my kids were in high school, all they used to get mad because I'd go up to the, we didn't have a laptop, we had like a desktop, and I'd go up and I'd be like, oh honey, what was that? And then it was recently closed, you know? <laughs> Look at the recently closed one. <laughs> yeah. Honey, what were you doing on that? You're supposed to be doing your homework. Um, withdrawal from typical family life and reluctance to discuss online activities. That one's hard because these are preteens and teens, okay? So it's hard to really gauge how much the withdrawal is in any way related to phone use versus other things occupying them, right? Contracts are not just for buying a house. No, they are not. Um, I would I highly recommend before this baby, let me see, if we do a zero to 10, 10 phone education, this is probably about number eight, okay? Before you give your kid a phone. Or if they have it, you back up and you go, oh honey, I'm so sorry, forgive me, I, I'm just kind of a clueless adult here and I forgot, but we need a contract. All right, starting now. So let's see what we can do here. There are a bunch of them online. I think, Kelly, do we work on a sheet that has those these things listed? I don't think so. That's okay. If you Google um, contracts, teen, parents, parents yep. um, electronics, 
you know, our phones, you're going to find a bunch of them. Josh Schiff has a good one. What's that? Josh Schiff. That one's on here. It's on here. It's on the next slide. Yay. <laughs> um, you have to redo the conditions. When, where, how. Why and to what extent? Oh, isn't that what we learned in like elementary school, something like English language? Anyway, off task. Um, when they may use it. So can they use it when you guys are having, you know, dad's nicely barbecued steak? You know, and it's dinner time. Okay, so should they know? All right, especially, so not to be used during these times, during homework time, during um, dinner time, when we're having company over time, um, after 9 p.m. time, not in your room time, whatever. Specify it out. Black and white, guys, get it written. Um, where are you going to use that? So can you use it at your friend's house? Can you use it at school? Can you use it on the bus? Okay. Um, how are they going to use it? Um, so just to cover the limits of the day. So how much of your time are you able to spend on that phone? What do you think would be a good word for, let's say, a 14-year-old kid to have their phone being used per day? What do you think is reasonable? Tough question. I would say one to two hours max. And that would be after all homework and, and obligations are met. But you have to cut it off before nine. So there may not be that much time. Um, and then also can cover conditions in which it might be taken away. All good things may come to an end, child. Um, and so if it's interfering with homework, okay, if they keep saying, oh, but mom, you know, uh, dad, I don't have any homework, or, it's all done, and you get a lot of missings that you see in that um, time when you check the parent portal, missing, missing, zero, whatever. Well, then that is messing with homework, okay? You break the rules of the contract, it's messing with your homework. Um, if it's interfering with your family relationships. If all you guys do is fight about it, it is interfering with your relationship. So thus, should be taken away. Um, if you're breaking the rules of the contract, any of them, bye-bye. Oh, yeah, here's the samples. Um, yeah, the Josh ship. There's a lot of checkboxy things. Um, very well family, had a great one. But there's a bunch of them out there, guys. And here, I thought, aha, let's get in this kid's head. Um, you can also say, hey, Susie, you know, I need a contract. There's some that, I, that I've kind of researched, but you know what? I'd like you to find some because it's a buy-in thing. Even if your kid grudgingly, they don't want a contract because they don't want to be held accountable because, frankly, most of their friends aren't. Um, but if, if you say, okay, you know, we'll use one. You know, why don't you find one for us? I'm, I'm open. And even if they do it grudgingly, <coughs> like that, they find one, and then it already kind of gets them into the buy-in. Okay. What if your kid breaks the contract? Sad. Don't be afraid to lay it on the line. And again, all this is done, guys, in a, you have to be careful of your tone. The tone should not be like, like your kid is set up to fail. Okay, they're going to break the rules. Sorry, guys. They are. These are kids. They haven't grown up yet. They don't have grown up brains. Expect that there will be times they break the rules. So be tough, but always do it with love. Always do it with compassion. Always do it with logic. And this is why, kiddo, I'm sorry, but I have to do this, you know? So it's not like, aha, uh -huh, you broke the rules. Uh -huh, well, here goes your phone. Huh. We'll see if you ever see the light of day in this thing again. No. Okay? Just, you know, honey, you broke the contract. So even things like, kiddo, you broke the contract and it was agreed upon. The grown-up world um, says that when negative things, that negative things will happen if you break a contract. Thus, I have to follow my end of the deal, which is to take it away. The more you can put things into like a real world existence, the goal of kids, hello, is to grow up. Right? So the more you can frame it, it's like, you know, this is where the grown-up world works, kid. <laughs> you know, and so I got to do that because that's the grown-up world. Um, so it's your job to enforce it. Um, other things to remind your kid. Um, I tell parents, it's okay to tell your kid that they're renting this phone. It is not their phone. Even if it was given to them by grandparents, it is not their phone. You're paying for the service. Okay, I would say 99% of parents they bought the phone. And if it's one that they don't, they don't use, uh, it's like an old one, they pass down a different version, they still bought it. So if you buy it, you pay the monthly service charge on it, it is yours, your child has the privilege of renting that out from you on a monthly basis. Okay? It is not a right. Okay? I will tell you, probably 98% of the kids that come into my office think it's a right. It is my right to have a phone. And even if you wait till 8, but it's my right because I'm an 8th grader and it's my right. No, you know, I'm sorry, it's not. It's a privilege. Okay? The world says that we don't need a, a cell phone to live. You know, right? I survive. I mean, I'll survive. The other thing, and when your kid is on consequence for breaking the contract, seriously, it, it's, even though you're going to be ticked off at your kid because they broke the rules and they're kind of messing with you and they're like, you got this conflict, 
make a deposit. Remember this slide. No, they have to remember this slide. Remember the nice little pretty apples? Okay, remember the nice, he's driving with his kid. Find something positive to do with your kid. So it doesn't feel that it's just all punitive. You are punishing your child for the foam rule breaky thingy, but you still got a kid and find other things to do with your kid. Okay? Take them out to breakfast, do something with them, go to an apple orchard, that's why I put them in there. You know, if your kid's old enough to practice driving, say, hey, you know, hey Johnny, let's let's go out and let's do some driving. You know? Make it a positive if you can. So it's not all conflict. Otherwise it's like war zones. Um, all right, parent control apps. Notice the above title. <clears throat> you, as a parent, are in control. <coughs> right? You are. It doesn't feel like that, does it? <laughs> but, but you are. We can not be two steps ahead of these kids. Right? But we are. That's our job. And so sometimes that trying to be in control of all this tech stuff, and frankly, it's probably over most of our heads in a big sense, um, we tend to give up. You can't give up, guys. You can't. It's just too dangerous. So you will be in control. You're going to keep learning. Um, and there are many apps to be able to monitor and limit your kids' stuff. Um, again, kind of repetition, but you have to be, find a go-to person to be the tech expert. Um, here are some sample parental control apps. So this is just a random sampling of ones that seem to have a lot of familiarity. But there's a lot out there, guys. Find one that's good for you. There one is called RPAT, and it schedules screen time. Um, it manually blocks and grants access to the internet and to the apps. Um, it's a family locator to physically track devices. Um, and geofences, and it blocks texting. So here's some other ones. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it, Custodia, but it, I like this one because it views um, how your child uses their screen time, kind of portions it out, this much on watching the YouTube, this much on you know, random surfing, this much on Facebook, this much on Insta, stuff like that. Um, it's installed on both the child and the parent devices, so there's a matching there. Um, it blocks the inappropriate content. It allows screen time only at certain times, so you can set those times, you know, from six to seven, you know, or seven to eight, whatever. Um, there, it controls the games and the apps. It monitors the social media, the calls and the texting. You can shut off the phone remotely. <laughs> master oh, button. <laughs> Talk about feeling like you're in control when you press that master button. <laughs> Kid, I am done with this. <laughs> um, it tracks location. And the tracking location, I, I totally, as a psychologist, I get it from a safety point of view. From a parent, I get it from a safety point of view. But man, it feels a little bit 84-ish, you know? They track everything, and it's like, okay. Can someone else Yeah. Yeah. A little bit creepy. Um, um, Kapersky manages screen time and app usage. And actually, I'm not going to spend too much time on these. They're all on a handout, I think, that you guys have, mm -hmm. that you can look at. Um, that way, we won't spend the time on this. Just another out there. There's one called the Norton Family. The Norton Family, they have a whole bunch of products for computer stuff. Um, and I put stop, okay? These networks work all kind of riled up about this stuff. And basically, what are we doing here? You know, we talk about having to take, you know, cords and put them in trunks so our kids aren't, you know, getting overly addicted to this stuff. And we're talking about having to use all these controls to, like, monitor and, you know, track where my kid is and how much time they're on this and that. Basically, ask yourself four words. Is it worth it? Is it worth it qualitatively in the context of your family and your child's best interest to even go through this junk? You know, it's like if it's, if, if it's battle after battle and monitoring and, and micromanaging, which takes a tremendous amount of your time and your energy and a tremendous amount of angst between you and your child. I think that's where the, the rubber meets the road, so to speak. It's like, is it worth it? What am I doing here? I get so sucked up into this stuff, thinking that I should do this, and, and it's really just kind of damaging, you know, my kid and our family relationships, okay? So especially how much, um, how would this monitoring damage a relationship with kids, okay? That's, that's a real serious thing. So think about that. And then here's the, some of those harmful apps. Oh, this is the music ninja, Hide It Pro, or it's called Hip. You see a hip on your kid's phone? I oh, hip, oh, that's a hip music, you know, hip hop, that kind of stuff. Um, no, it's disguised as a music manager app, but instead it hides photos, texts, and other apps on the phone. Um, the kid sets a pin code and can move files into that app so the parents can't find them. I have no idea what it's on there. It's hidden. Your kid's got the password and pin number. Eek! This is the one that when my kid was researching, she goes, Mom, there's this thing called HIP. She goes, I had no idea they could even do that. And she's 20. She's pretty tech savvy. Okay, more than I am, frankly. Admission, you know. And she's like, I had no idea they, they could do that stuff. Oh, calculator with the number hashtag-y thingy. 
Yeah, so you can tell when you're old when you call it a number sign or a hashtag sign. Okay, I still have the number sign. Um, it's calculated a number. It can hide photos, contacts, browser history, and more files while posing as a calculator. Oh, my kid, they're thinking they're working on more complicated math. They're thinking of a new calculator on their phone. I'm not a calculator. Oh, sure, that's fine. Uh, no, it's not. It's one of the most popular ones to access a front for potentially inappropriate contact, um, content. Other apps that hide information, I think, is called KeepSafe, and then HPS is um, called it, uh, it hides private data and photos and videos. And these are also on a, on a sheet that was worked up. So these slides, basically, I took that info and they worked it up. I think Michelle worked it up onto a sheet for you guys. All right, Omegle, it connects kids to strangers um, by video or chatting. Kids can go straight to a website, they type in some keywords, and they're connected with video and they can chat with people. Yeah. Similar sites are, um, I don't know how to pronounce that, Chatroulette, whatever, it sounds fancy, it sounds French. Um, Blender, I've heard a lot of kids that I work with have had Blender, Tiny Chat, or a lot of kids have, have, had, have had Meet Me. Yeah, Meet Me. Meet Me is a really bad. dangerous It one. is bad. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, really dangerous with sexual predators. And I, in the app that they mentioned in the newspaper article about um, the 12 year old girl who went with a person in South Carolina, it was an app I hadn't heard of. It's not on this list. They, they're all, they come up all the time. They do. Like if you're on like yeah. Facebook or yeah. Twitter, they're just at advertising those dating, meeting, mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't keep track of no. it. No. I don't know how you do it. That's what just, it constantly surprises You just got to see yourself. what's going on their phone and figure out exactly. whatever it is. That, like, I, yeah, like, I don't know how you would, yeah. you can't hope to keep track of what, no. what's out there. You got to just keep track of what's on Absolutely. the Absolutely. And check it out. Yeah. Um, Tinder, <laughs> you guys probably know about Tinder. Um, it's, I mean, it's a dating app. It's a meetup app. app. Basically, they call it a dating app. It's really a hookup app. Okay, and there's no age limits. They say there is, but it's not monitored. So teenagers can get onto Tinder. Um, or Yubo, which is Tinder for teens. Um, a meetup one. Um, no age verification. Grinder, Tinder plus plus plus. I didn't put XXX, but I put plus plus plus, meaning three times probably more um, harmful than Tinder. Telenem. Okay, so Telenem and House Party and some of these others, they're more like interacting online. And this is where the cyberbullying comes into play. And I have had kids in my office, bless their hearts, sweet kids, but been damaged because a kid will say, um, you know, that question was stupid. You should go kill yourself. People say that. People say that to these kids on these apps. And, it's, and it can serve as something as innocent as like, you know, what do you think about this as a, a topic? Or what do you think about this movie star? So I'm um, telling them and House Party, and then I think there's Ask F <coughs> are really bad about that. House party, I've had kids with house party. There's no restrictions on this. As long as one person is connected on to somebody in your group, then that person can invite anybody. And there's a lot of videoing that goes on in, in house party, which has been solicited in a sense wherever. Um, that's another one with like, um, that question is so stupid, you should just kill yourself. Kick, probably about like five or six years ago. So my practice is in Oakdale, but I have a lot of um, families from Woodbury in the suburbs. And probably about five or six years ago, there was a sting in Woodbury, Woodbury Cops, that there was a, a, a segment of kids in a section of Woodbury <coughs> that had gotten on kick, and there was a group of predators from Detroit, Michigan, coming to Woodbury to make physical contact and meet up with those kids. And thankfully, the Woodbury PD found about it in time, and no kids actually went to Detroit. But it was, I mean, it started because one kid got it, and then they passed it into the other kid, and the other kid, and the other kid. So it was a group. It wasn't even just a solo thing. And I was just really glad when I heard about that. They were shut down before any kid got, you know, abducted and lost or killed. So that was Woodbury, Minnesota, you know, 10 miles from you guys here in Hudson. <laughs> um, it's social messaging, no age ver verification, get high risk of the sexting and the cyberbullying. Ask FM is, again, you ask questions, people can, you know, respond and few restrictions on that. All right, so who says we need our kids to be so smart anyway, right? With these smartphones. So more and more parents um, are realizing the dangers of these, and they're going to dumb phones. Okay, the old-fashioned dumb phone. Things um, like Relay, which is like a little device thing. It's like a little square. It's about like that big, something like that. And actually, I have one kiddo that I work with that was really addicted to um, to his smartphone. He was way young, and and also his parents were like, okay, we, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And bless their hearts, they did. They 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 eliminated it, and they substituted this Relay system. And it has like um, you can text, 
for parents. It's a restricted um, list of people you can tag. Um, it's like a walkie-talkie kind of a thing, too, so you can do that. And it has like um, a perimeter thing or like a tracking thing so they can know where he's at. So it works just fine. You know, for an eight-year-old, he's not happy as a lark with it. Okay, he realizes he's not getting in trouble all the time. So that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and then believe it or not, um, there is a start of a movement amongst older kids. Okay, you know, even my kid Haley in college, now she's a junior. And she goes, yeah, you know what, Mom? She goes, there's a bunch of people that I know of it at college. And they, they, they've stopped having their smartphones. They're going to the flip phones. And um, then I dug up some research on that as well. There's kind of this movement of these young adults. And apparently what the research shows is when they ask, why are you doing this? It was just too much stress. I'm done with it. It's too much stress. So that's, that's a positive. You know, there is some insight, even amongst young Americans, young adults, that, um, that this is not a good thing. I don't think your kids are there yet, though. Sorry, guys. So in closing, um, guys, don't be afraid to think you're going to do it wrong. Okay? You're here for a reason. You're going to take action. You're going to help your kid, and you're going to start to monitor and make decisions that are helpful for your kid. Um, action, action, action. You know, talking, 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 action, action, action. If you remember nothing else, remember that. You've got to keep talking about these things, but then that leads to action on your part as parents. Um, um, it's okay to be different good. I tell my families, like, there's two different kinds of different. I even tell kids this. Two different kinds of different. There's different bad, okay? Meaning you're the one who's getting in trouble all the time. That's, that's not so good, you know? You don't, you don't want to be known as the bully. That's different bad, okay? Different good is when you do things out of the ordinary, but in a positive way, right? So if any of you make the decision to monitor your kids' electronics and take this seriously and get contracts and all that, you're being different good, okay? Because the rest of the world isn't keeping up with you guys yet, but you're ahead of the curve. You're being different good, okay? Different feels uncomfortable at first, but you get used to it and you, you tell yourself, this is different good, this is different good. Um, and then keep talking to your kids. I have my little closing comments here though. A smartphone costs about a thousand bucks, plus or minus. Remember, your relationship with your kid is what's priceless, guys. You can't put a, you can't put a thousand bucks, you can't put a cost on it. So it is worth the time and the energy to really tackle this. Yeah, right. Oh, look at that again. Okay, two uh, of you on the dot. Thank you, guys. You've been a great audience.